Hello, welcome to the video for how do I change the camera during gameplay. Let me go ahead and just run this and you'll see we actually have a non-default perspective. We're looking from another camera and our little character can run around and probably fall off if I can find the edge. So basically this is done using the set view target with blend node. Now this is slightly confusing for people looking to change the camera because the word camera is not in the node. Now the set view target with blend node is based off of the player controller, which is another confusing thing. And then you basically set a new view target, which can be an actor, which has a camera built into it or a camera itself. And then you have some blend options. So we're going to go ahead, we'll cover the options and we'll cover some slight uses for it. So, set view target with blend. The key for this one is it has to come off of your player controller. This is where the first confusing part comes in. You're going to find it by typing in set view target with blend, but off of your player controller if you have contact sensitive turned on. It kind of makes sense, but it's just slightly annoying because it has nothing to do with the word camera, and if you pull up the camera itself, you can't change into the camera for view. It's all done through this node off of the player controller. So now that we've got that resolved, you need a target. Um, so yeah, you need a target. You need a. Tar that's the other confusing thing. The target of the set view mode is the player controller. Hence up here, target is player controller. And then you need to set another target, which is the actual target you will be looking through. And that will be your camera. Or for example, if you have a player, the player will have a camera. If you hook up your player, it'll pull the player's camera out. And I'll show you that in a second. So we need to set up a camera. So in our example here, I'm using our level blueprint. I've just simply gone ahead and set up another camera actor on the other side of the screen. Came in here, created a reference to my camera actor, and hooked it up as my new view target, which you can see there. And all it does now when we run it is it simply changes our default view, which is the player's, the actor, sorry, the default pawn's camera into our new camera because that's what we've told it to do. Now it does this instantly. That's what the blend time is for. It uses no form of interpolation for blending from one camera to the other. And we're not locking the outgoing. And I'll show how those are covered in a second. Those are pretty much the only options here. Now I'll go ahead and use an example of going from one camera to another, maybe it's kind of like a um, an animated introduction to your character. So if I play this, you'll see what happens. And we'll notice nothing happened because I forgot to turn this back. So let's try that again. So there we go. He basically goes from the first camera and it'll automatically transition with a nice little rotation and a swoop into our target, which is our player character. And you notice I can move the character. So here's some of the issues we're going to run into and some of the options. Now we have our blend time. Right now I've set this to a variable of two seconds, but if you don't have it hooked up, obviously it's easy enough to just type in your own blend time. I went with a variable because it's going to help us in a little bit. Now we have our different blend functions. If you mouse over each of them, it'll give you a short description. Linear is just a straight one to one, zero to one lerp basically from one position to the other. Cubic is the same thing, but there's a little bit of easing in and easing out at the start and the end, kind of like a, a little bit of, instead of a, a smooth, flat curve, there's a little bit of smoothness to start and a little smoothness to end. Your other blends are your eases. Ease in, ease out, ease in out. And basically this adjusts um, the amount of easing either on the deceleration, basically when you get to your target, or at the start from your outgoing camera, or a little bit on both. Now one of the things on this is if you ran it, you'll notice there's no blending and no camera. If you look at the mouse overs, it'll tell you at the end, ease amount controlled by blend exponent. That's what this is right here. Blend exponent is basically how much easing there is, and this is a float. So I set it to one, for example. You'll now see there's a little bit. And if I was to change that to a higher number, let's go with three. You'll notice a little bit of slowdown and then it snaps into position. And of course, we change it to ease out. You'll see the opposite. It immediately hurries up and slows down, and then ease in, ease out, does the opposite, slow down, quick, slow down. So those are your options for your easing. Now, lockout going, this is done on your destination node. 
So right now I'm trying to set up my destination to the player character. If I do a lockout going and I was to run this, basically it it doesn't allow it to start from the other's rotation. It will start um, relative to where the destination camera is and then zoom in. It's, it's odd to use. You'll need it under certain circumstances. Basically, you'll know if you need it or not. So that looks cool and nice and handy, but here's an issue. When you, the game starts, your player has control. So if I was to run this and move my camera, you'll notice I have issues. Let's set this back to linear and hit play, and you'll notice I'm having problems. Well, what we need to do is easy to solve, is we need to disable the player's input and then re-enable it once we're done with our blend. So I went ahead and I actually have those two nodes here. So let's move these two nodes up, and we'll put them here, and then we'll take the other one, which is the enable, and we're going to put this at the end over here. And I'm going to give it a little space for a reason. And what the disable input node does is pretty simple. It gets your player's controller, it gets your player character, and it disables any input, assuming you're using a player controller. If you have um, your input coming in via another source, then obviously this is going to work. But if you use the default player pawn controller character setup, then it's really simple. One node, we hit play. Input's disabled, and then we can move again. Well, unfortunately, I kind of lied on that one. If I hit play and rotate, you notice I'm still rotating. Well, unfortunately, if you notice here, there's no time icon. There's no delay icon here. This is done instantly. The blending over time is done separately, and it will continue executing immediately once you start your view target. So it's pretty simple. We need to find my delay node. And this is the reason why I set up my camera transition speed as a variable. Basically, I just put in a small delay to the same amount of my blend speed. I hit play. I can't move my camera. And then once I get there, I can move my camera. So that's it. That's simple. That's how you change your camera during gameplay. Um, one thing to keep in mind, your cameras, since they're part of your level blueprint, really can only be accessed by your level blueprint if you were right-clicking and creating a reference. If you want to try to create a reference when you're playing the game itself, um, in another blueprint, for example, it's not going to work. You can't open up for, um, let's find our UMG for this, for example. And if we were to go in here and right click, you'll notice I can't create a reference to my camera. It's because you can only do that in the level blueprint because the level blueprint exists as part of the level. So you could do something like getting all the actors all your cameras but an issue is keep in mind I have one camera actor in here but once I actually hit play you're gonna find that I have another camera actor in here which is part of the character itself so you have run into an issue if you do uh, get all actors one thing you can do and this is what I do if I try to set up just a quick little cutscene keep in mind this is not matinee matinee has things built in to automatically transition from camera to camera if you're doing a cutscene. This is meant for more like um, quick introductions like this. Rather than doing a matinee, it's just boom. I set up a camera and I, I change views. Or maybe your game is set up inside of a hospital where you're looking through security cameras. So when you enter in a hallway, kind of like the old Resident Evil style, it changes camera positions. This is how you would do that. You'd have a trigger volume with a camera associated with it. You walk into the trigger volume. You can view blend over to that new camera. And you can just set up your level like that. So what you can do, and this is what I'd recommend if, for example, you need to do something outside of your level blueprint, is it's pretty simple. You just create a new actor. Just create an actor or spawn actor. I always get that confused. Spawn actor from class. And all you have to do is just go ahead and create a camera. And now you have a camera in here you notice you have your spawn transform, so you can split it, and you have where it goes. Spawn your camera where you want your camera to spawn. Get a reference to it, you know, promoting it to a variable. And now you can do a set of view target with that one. You know, we'll get the player controller. Set of view part. Set view target with blend. We now have our view target. Our new view target is going to be the camera we just spawned. We set up any blend time, and there we go. So you may have buttons on your screen and you can change your view targets this way. This will allow you to keep control of cameras. Maybe you don't want 10 cameras active, only your 
old target and your new target, for example. So you can just spawn in your new camera, get rid of your old camera when you're done with it. You know, keep an array of simply positions. You know, you go in here, we go to our camera, and we have our location, rotation, and scale. There's no reason we can't put that in, a, in an array of a transform, and then just use that whenever we spawn into our new transform. So that's how you can basically use your view target at runtime completely by scratch, spawning in the camera, and then setting your view target with blend. And that's it. Um, hopefully, it, it, it's nice because it gives you, like I said, you have your normal start, and then I have this nice little transition in, and then I can play my game. It gives a little cinematic feel, makes it feel better. And I know that I had difficulty figuring out how to change the camera because <laughs> there's, the node is not camera. It's not part of the camera, and it doesn't have the word camera in it, and it was really annoying. So hopefully this helps out people, give them a little bit of flair for their game, helps you change cameras at runtime, and I hope you, uh, if you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to post below.